Well, good afternoon, fellow preppers. And today we're going to start maybe a different series with your old Uncle Carl here on the Easy Prepping Channel. See, I've been thinking about possibly doing some uh, reviews on items since I have such a large experience with many different products. And one that really got me started thinking about this was the other day we had uh, a couple friends, a little relative and a friend, come up to do some shooting at the up at the man cave. And it's kind of become a little bit of a tradition with us that a uh, relative of mine that comes out of Louisville stops at a taco hell on the way and brings us lunch. Well, this time was our last trip to taco hell. The quantity of the product. Uh, one friend coming up from Fort Knox, uh, Said he'd like a couple of Supreme tacos, which, anyway, I thought would be a good size taco. Well, when we went through the bag, the Supreme tacos were kind of wrapped up, looked more like a burrito, but when I opened them, they were wrapped, they were rolled up, but the whole thing, including the wrapping, was maybe as big around as a quarter and five inches long, six tops. So I opened it up just to see and the contents were almost non-existent. You could barely tell there was anything in the middle. Well, Taco Hell may be improving their profit margin, but they're eliminating customers. I guarantee you it will be a cold day in hell before I ever go back to another taco hell. The next item I'd like to uh, give you my opinion on is a Keurig coffee maker. You know, the little one cup at a time things. Anyway, a few years back, I bought one that would do the pot and the one cup thing. They call it the duo or something. But anyway, when occasionally we have visitors, we need enough coffee made that we'll make a pot. But most mornings, it's just me getting my one cup of coffee to most. And, uh, well, slightly over a year old, it broke. And it kept saying to descale it. And I descaled the tarnation out of it. And it still would not work. It would not pump water through the thing. And it was over a year, therefore, outside of warranty. Well, I went ahead and knuckled under. Because when it was working, it was pretty good and got another one, and Amazon had the exact same model. But this one, I made darn sure, filled out that warranty card, put a stamp on that bad boy, and took it out to the mailbox. And about a week later, it came back, address not found. How can a major corporation like Keurig not have an address that's on their warranty card? Well, anyway, that one's now broke. And it went straight to the trash can. And I've bought my last Keurig. I will just, I've got an older one that just still makes a pot of coffee. I'll just, even though I only usually drink a cup, I'll just make a, a third to a half of a pot every morning. And next up, fellow peppers, I'm going to review, in case you can't see here in front of me, a firearm. Anytime I bring up firearms on this channel, we go over the four main rules of firearm safety. Number one, always treat every firearm as if it's loaded. If you notice, I even point barrels away from me when it's in a disassembled state. It's just a habit I've gotten into. Is think of it as a barrel, think about it as dangerous. Assume it's loaded. Treat it as if it's loaded. And next, which goes hand in hand with that one, is never point at anything you're not willing to destroy. It's always keep it pointed in a safe direction. Whether loaded, unloaded, doesn't matter. Keep it pointed in a safe direction. At least safe as far as not hurting anyone. Number three, keep your finger off that trigger until you're absolutely ready to fire. You see this one, no magazine, nothing in the chamber, bolt is extracted, retracted, 
But as you grip it, finger off the trigger, up in this position. Never put your finger on the trigger until you are pointed down range, ready to shoot. And last, know your target and what's behind it. I give a little bit of an example of that. A few weeks back, I had some friends up from the Fort Knox area and we did some shooting. And one of my friends, and it's partially my fault, I didn't notice either, I'd made some target stands out of PVC pipe. But we were currently shooting at some targets that I mount up on uh, pallets. Well, he had moved the target, the PVC stand target, to directly downrange, right beyond the pallet. And I didn't notice, in shooting the pallet, we destroyed the PVC pipe target. So make sure what's behind your target, even if it's an inanimate object like a target stand. Now, as I showed you a moment ago, I want to review a firearm. Do not call this a shotgun. It is not a shotgun. If it were a shotgun, it would be illegal because as the name implies, it's a VRF-14, meaning it has a 14-inch barrel. It is put out by a company called Rock Island Arms, who is also uh, AMS Corps. If you've ever used any of their ammo, those two companies are, well, pretty much one and the same. As I showed a moment ago, finger off the trigger. It is empty, nothing in the chamber, no magazine. Bolt is in the retracted position. Magazine release. Bolt carrier release. Fire and safe switch. And sling attach point. The reason I told you showing you the sling attach point is because I bought two of them and it was such a great deal. Even my gunsmith, who is also my FFL, said that just about giving them away. Notice the sling attach point broken. This one also, actually they both have a lot of trouble cycling. When I've contacted Rock Island Arms, AMS Corps, they told me to use a better ammo. Well, there's nothing in the ad on it or any information you could find at their website about having to use a specific type of ammo for the thing to function. One point to make is if you're using two and a half or two and three quarter inch 12 gauge shells, there's the adapter for it. See, it is a little bit bigger than the adapter that they tell you to put in for three inch shells. Anyway, I have not fired any three inch in it. I own a few, some three inch, but really not much. So I've been using this adapter. Another thing, it took them weeks to respond to my emails to their customer service that I was having an issue. In fact, when I first took this one, you see disassembled here out of the box. This is as far as the book has you take it apart to clean it. The bolt would not cycle, would not come back more than maybe an inch tops, no matter how hard I pushed on it. So I went ahead and disassembled it thinking there's just something jammed up in there. And I would give it a shot before I worried about maybe even sending it back. But after I disassembled it, I found a broken O-ring on my workbench. I told Rock Island Arms this in the email. Also sent a picture of the broken O-ring. They sent me several O-rings. And I have gone through this thing with a fine tooth comb. And the other one that I did not find an O-ring broken and out of. And I cannot find where an O-ring goes in this thing. I've watched videos. I've done everything I possibly can with this thing, try to figure out where these O-rings go, and I can't see where they go. Anyway, as far as the broken strap attach point, they have sent me a new one. There it is. You can see it in the bag. They also included two more O-rings. They'd already sent me a couple. 
in another one of the two and three quarter inch shell adapters. So they're sending more stuff than what I need to fix this thing. But now I need to go through the process of complete disassemble, which I could not find a, even a video on how to do. I'm going to have to take this whole clamshell apart in order to replace this part on the end. Also, getting them to cycle. Uh, I've had a lot of difficulty with the different ammos, even double light buck, number six, number four, and good name brand ammo. I'm not shooting just really cheap stuff off, cheap stuff off the shelf. But both of these have issues. I have rarely fired around without having the next one jam, either the ejection of the empty or the loading of the fresh round from the five round magazine. I also have nine round magazines that I've purchased. But when it does fire, you notice that this thing does not have a shoulder brace. And you grip it at your hip. It comes with a couple of pop-up sights, but there's no way you're going to hold this thing up like that to try to shoot it, unless you want a broken cheekbone. And so you shoot it from the hip. And it's maybe because my older hands, well, even younger guys I've had up here that have fired this, your hands are stinging for a half an hour after you shoot this thing. And it's extremely hard to even hold on to. And if you look online at their website, the sample or the model they show holding this thing has arms as big around as my legs so he can hold on to it and shoot it well i can't so even if it worked properly i would probably sell these two as i can't hold on to them but if you can hold on to this thing and if you can get one to function properly i think you've got pretty much the perfect home defense weapon with a 14 inch barrel you're going to get a lot of spread really fast on whatever type shot you're, you're firing out of this thing. One quick thing I did forget to mention, which should be part of the review, is they come with a really nice, well, a hard case. The thing is, it can be a little difficult getting these uh, snapped back on. They're really tight. That might loosen up more with use. But comes with a really nice case, soft foam lining inside. Uh, there's a safety lock. There's the uh, pop-up sights. I was about came in. Like I said, I've never taken them out of the new package because you just don't want to put sights on this thing and try to hold it up near your eyeball. But very nice hard case that they come with. Well, now that I've found my uh, spectacles, I should be able to see things a little better here. But onward. One thing my uh, pappy did try to drill in to me was that you never present a problem without also offering a possible solution. Well, I just showed you a firearm that I would not recommend, especially if you're getting older or you have hands that can't hold on to the thing. Well, that it doesn't function real well. Anyway, here's my primary home defense Shotgun. You can call this one a shotgun. This is a Mossberg, which is a very good name in shotguns. I've fired Mossbergs for uh, 40 years plus now. Anyway, finger outside the trigger. No, nothing in it. Chamber's in the reverse position. It's open. Nothing in there. I do have a sleeve on the side of it with extra shells. But one of them. And also, limb saver. Uh, my shoulder is not as strong as it used to be. This is an extra pad. It's kind of like a sock the way it fits onto the uh, buttstock here. But eight plus one rounds. Nine rounds if you store one in the chamber and I do not. But potentially nine rounds of 12 gauge before you have to stop and reload. And also what I have in it here is a round called the PDX-1, which, if you look those up online, that is an extremely wicked self-defense round. But Mossberg 590 SP, I would recommend. I've never had trouble with any Mossberg that I have owned. 
So if you can't see the way I recommend, the way I keep it, is I get these sleeves for the shotgun rides down inside there so the trigger is covered. And then I use the straps that are on it to hang from the rod in my closet, the bedroom closet, so that it's a uh, quick access. So one thing I found that I've got on here, a lot of extra shells are in these two containers. Mossberg 590 SP, in fact, any Mossberg I would recommend. And just a quick little bit, I'll show you here, it is back in its sleeve. The trigger is covered. You cannot pull, touch that trigger accidentally. Very important safety feature. And the next solution I have here is for someone that might be on a tighter budget, but is looking for a, what I think is a dependable shotgun, and goes bang when you pull the trigger and has no issue loading the next round. It's one thing I kind of, I'm really starting to lean more toward pump shotguns than semi-automatic. Uh, you're more in control. Anyway, this one, made in Turkey. Emperor Firearms is the name they use when they ship these, a lot of these to the United States. It is a 12 gauge. And the price is what I wanted to point out. The last one of these I purchased, I found at a place called uh, Kentucky Gun Co. And they had it, uh, they said it was regular price $250. i have never paid anywhere near that for one. I think they normally go about $150, $170. They had them on sale for $99. And I had just wandered in there to kind of look around. I was, uh, was early for an appointment in Louisville, and uh, Kentucky Gun Co. was close by. So I just wandered around the store and found that. And, uh, well, I had to pick that one up. Anyway, you've got your uh, two-dot on the rear, adjustable fiber front sight, five plus one. Does not have near the tube length here in the magazine tube to hold eight rounds. But it does hold five. If you put one in the chamber, then that would be called your five plus one. Once again, I do not keep one in the chamber. This one is... The slide is in the rear position. There's no round in it. There's no rounds in the magazine. Here's what I just took out of the magazine. This is one I also keep in one of these sleeves, and I hang it from a rail in a closet in a bedroom. But what was in this one, two and a quarter inch, two and three quarter inch, double lot buck. If you don't know, each one of these is like firing eight or nine, depending on the round. 32 caliber pistols simultaneously. And once again, this is more of a self-defense shotgun. You can tell by the length of the barrel here. I don't know exactly offhand here what barrel is on this one. I'm guessing maybe about a 17 inch. But once again, this time I'll show you how it goes in the sleeve that I use to uh, hold in the closet rail. You can see, trigger completely covered. No way you can get to it. And then it hangs in the closet rail by these straps. So it's staying, gravity is holding it inside this satchel. That's just a little update on how I keep my some of my firearms in the house for self-defense. But I've never had trouble with one. I have several of these. I have a nephew that has one. He comes up to shoot frequently. And uh, we've never had an issue with one. So a more well, less expensive firearm, budget, shotgun, that is dependable. It's, I've never had an issue with them. They fired every time. In closing, I'd like to ask that uh, if you have not already, please click that uh, subscribe button if you think this video held something valuable to you. Give me that thumbs up button. If you disagree with me, leave a comment. I'm always open to constructive criticism. If you have something that you'd like to see me review, well, give my opinion on anyway. Leave me in the comments, and we'll get to it. And as a lot of you know, I like to end every video with a prepper-related quote. And today's quote is by a gentleman named Spencer W. Kimball. And it is, preparedness, when properly pursued, is a way of life not a sudden 
spectacular program. Thank you for watching.